Hello, everybody. Welcome to um, our talk today around growing your intelligent enterprise with SAP Eightfold and Deep Learning. We really thank you for joining today. My name is Hoko Baker, and I manage the SAP Global Partnership for Eightfold. Leaders everywhere are embracing intelligent technologies like never before. With global events such as COVID, um, it's really driving significant changes in customer behavior and employee needs. Leaders must drive new approaches today. Creating an intelligent enterprise has the foundation to be resilient and to grow in this environment and combat any changes to come. Today, we will be discussing how deep learning AI technologies deliver agile, forward-looking people management strategies for intelligent enterprises. You're gonna hear that word a lot today. The discussion will explore specific challenges leaders are facing and how intelligent technologies are addressing them today. So we're gonna jump in and talk about four different buckets. First, personalized experiences. How can enterprises really attract and retain people with individual experiences? We're gonna talk about responsible restructuring and why skills-based people management is the foundation of talent retention in the marketplace. People engagement, how enterprises can be more effective in planning for future talent needs. And finally, enterprise culture and why cross-functional collaboration is a core value for success and how skills and potential-based people management can unlock collaboration. Now, before we kick off, I wanted to share my personal experience with, with Eightfold. When I started at Eightfold, I was a contractor living in the UK doing business development work in Europe. I was making phone calls, setting meetings, and driving pipeline for the business. Flash forward almost three years, I relocated back home to Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes and lots of snow, and I am now leading the SAP Global Partnership and doing it successfully. Right, uh, Kamala and Carl? <laughs> I look for it. <laughs> Thank you. I look for every opportunity internally to learn and grow via cross functional collaboration. When I saw a need for another person in the partner team, I jumped right in. While I might have pushed myself in, to be very clear, <laughs> when the role to lead SAP came up, I hopped, I honed in on my skills. I put my profile forward internally and pushed forward. This is internal mobility and hiring for potential at its best. Enough about me, I'd like to introduce you to our panel. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to know Eightfold. Holly, let's start with you. Hi, Hope, thank you and welcome everybody. Um, so I'm Holly Quincy, I work for Bayer. Uh, the life sciences company um, and I know um, Eightfold because uh, we're working with Eightfold now since 2019. They're our talent uh, uh, management platform provider and partner and uh, SAP is our HR systems partner. So actually uh, this is this is a nice uh, three-way par three partnership we've got going on here. So uh, that's a little bit about me. And I head um, the talent acquisition, attraction and solutions team globally for, for Bayer. Thank you so much, Holly. Carl, let's go over to you. Yes, hi everyone. My name is Carl Fabach. I am the chief partner officer of SAP. I've been in the company now for over 15 years. So long, long time uh, SAP employee always in the partner business. So that's something that I really love, right? I mean, partnering, collaborating uh, with, with other companies and with other individuals as well. And then and the reason I'm here, right? And, and, and our relationship with Eightfold, uh, it's basically because Eightfold is one of our um, most important SAP partners, right? We have um, many different levels, right? And in, in the level of uh, endorse apps, right? One of our software partner categories, right? In, in the highest ranking of, of the value between SAP and our partners. Um, mm -hmm. That's where Eightfold is actually um, one of our key partners, right? Actually, we have only 15 partners in this category, one five, and Eightfold is one of them. So I think we're happy with uh, to be here with, with every one of you. And um, and we partner in the area of uh, human experience management, right, with, with Eightfold, with the idea as well to expand on the intelligent, intelligent enterprise area, which I will cover a little bit later. And I just want as well to, the, to take the opportunity to con congratulate Kamal and the entire Eightfold family for the recent Pinnacle Award winner, right, for, for SAP. So Pinnacle Awards actually reward <laughs> our partners, our best of the best, right, in the world, and Eightfold is one of them. So congratulations again. Thank you. And 
And thank you, Carl. We are so ecstatic. Um, love the partnership. Kamal, let's go over to you. <laughs> sure. So I'm Kamal. I'm the president. And uh, now I hope work for Hope Baker. And uh, so we've built our single AI platform for all talent. Uh, mission is to actually provide the right career to everyone in the world. And in three plus short years, uh, we're now in 110 countries. Uh, actually, we have uh, customers with SAP in almost every continent, Mercado Libre in uh, Argentina, LG now in South Korea, several in Europe, and you'll uh, hear from Holly as well. Dexcom, another great company out of uh, US that's solving uh, diabetes, variable solution for diabetes, uh, Dolby, and so many others. And I think the key for us is not just to uh, bring innovative to solution, but to really figure out how to solve this at scale. Your personal journey, love it. How do we unlock that for everyone in our organization? Because the main question, especially I think after last year, the awareness is much higher. Once you're past a few thousand employees, the CEO loses track of what their employees are capable of doing, right? Everybody is investing a lot in both learning and development, upskilling, reskilling, DNI. The key is how can you make it data driven? How can you do it for everyone? And how can you make it personalized versus you know peanut butter approach across everything? So those are the things that we are looking to solve. And uh, thank you to all our guests for actually being here. And uh, back to you, Hope. Thank you, Kamal. I'm excited to dig in more to that in a little bit. So Carl, as I mentioned in the beginning, we're gonna hear Intelligent Enterprise a lot today. I'd love for you to just tell us a little bit about more about the Intelligent Enterprise and what that means for SAP. Yeah, perfect. So the Intelligent Enterprise is actually um, SAP's vision, right? SAP's vision and SAP strategy as well, and uh, which we have actually converted as well into an offering, right, for customers. So basically our vision is to make every business an intelligent business, right? and make sure as well that we eliminate complexity, we simplify as well the way companies are run with systems, right, with the support of the systems, uh, with, with the help as well of intelligent uh, technologies, right? Um, so if you look at um, what we want to do with the intelligent enterprise, right, for every customer, is making sure that all the processes are integrated within the company, so uh, we can eliminate silos, we can eliminate as well complexity within the companies, right? And then that data that gets produced of running an intelligent enterprise, right, we use as well to make intelligent decisions based as well on technology. Uh, what are those processes? I mean, uh, I think you can, you, you can name them, right? I mean, we can go from any kind of function within the company and really name the process that we really cover within the, in the intelligent enterprise, hire to retire, procure to pay. So basically, we make sure that all those dots for all those processes are really connected so we can remove again complexity and, and silos, right? Um, as I mentioned before, a key element is as well to make sure that we have as well intelligent technologies, right? Within that intelligent enterprise to make sure that the data that gets produced can really be used um, for intelligence, uh, intelligent decisions. If you look at, and I mentioned before, right? It's, it's an offering that we have as well make sure that uh, we have tangible for our customers to consume. And basically the, 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 the offering includes, a, or basically sits on our business technology platform, right? The platform for to integrate processes, the platform as well to create new processes and to innovate. Um, and then the, the platform as well to extend SAP solutions, right? So basically we have the platform as, as the core, right? And then on top of that, we have our um, ERP solutions, right? Basically, uh, the core of the company that is running that foundation of the business technology platform. And then on top of that, we run the different LOB solutions that we have, right? Uh, uh, human experience management, uh, customer uh, experience, um, digital supply chain. So basically all of that is integrated, as I mentioned before. And, uh, and then if you look at that vision, right? And if you look at really running all the processes of your company, uh, integrated and, and then run as well on technologies that can uh, help you as well with intelligent decisions, we've realized as well that in SAP, we cannot do it alone. So here, we really need to help uh, the help of the partners to complete that vision and to complete that offering. So basically, the intelligent enterprise will always have some white spaces that we would like the partners to cover. 
and uh, and this is the reason why as well we we work here with Eightfold, right? So, so they cover a very important white space that we have in our intelligent enterprise, and this is why we collaborate together and we go to market together. So that's basically in a nutshell the intelligent enterprise. Thank you for that. And we are going to dive deeper into that because I've got some follow-up questions for you. Absolutely. Holly, why don't you walk us through um, global you know, business and talent transformation at Bayer and what you're seeing in the market? Thanks, Hope. Um, so it's been quite a journey, actually. I mean, I've been in Bayer four and a half years and um, the transformation has been continuous. Um, you know, when, when I first joined, it was about embedding um, the new model of talent acquisition. And uh, then kind of second year, it was an acquisition of a big ag business and the organization had to pivot into agricultural uh, Monsanto uh, space. So much more digital, much more agile in terms of um, the business strategy. And that's now taking 50% of our organization. Um, still obviously consumer farmer business, but but the ag business is, is now much bigger because of that acquisition. So the skills that we needed and the jobs that we're fulfilling have obviously changed and pivoted. Um, we also had a change in our external environment. So, you know, everything that, that's happened outside, whether that be uh, political landscapes around the world, Brexit, which of course I had to mention being a Brit, but, um, you know, also just thinking about change of presidency in the US and uh, the cost market and pricing for our products across our consumer landscape, what was happening in China. So all of these things and all of these um, business strategies that have been built, whether that's outside in influences or within uh, internally within the organization have meant that we've had quite a large transformation in the people agenda and the people strategy and shaping that strategy. Um, in 2019, actually, I was part of a small project that worked with uh, Willis Towers Watson on the people strategy and five clear pillars. And that was around uh, our leadership capability. So much less hierarchical leadership, uh, much more uh, coaching and servant style leadership and a non-hierarchical business structure. Um, speed to decision making, so really thinking about how we can really speed up our experiences, our employee journeys, our user experiences, our decision making, so being much more um, individually accountable for decisions and less decision by consensus. Um, connectivity was our, our third pillar out of the five, so really that outside in view and really understanding the commercial landscape externally across the, the different businesses that we were playing in, whether that's consumer, um, fast moving goods, over the counter drug sales, our pharma business, um, or whether that was now in the uh, agricultural space. And then um, employment proposition, so really thinking about a more segmented approach to our talent landscape. So thinking about the critical roles and the skills and the capabilities that we needed to be able to drive business growth and performance. Um, and then really fit for purpose workforce was our, was our fifth pillar. So really thinking about how do we become more agnostic about the contract type? How do we become more agnostic about the locations of our talents? And how do we really um, think about gig marketplace in a in a data driven world and in a world where gig is becoming a much bigger uh, contract type and how do we look at that against a landscape of uh, a culture where uh, we've had many people in bed that have been there many years and not worked anywhere else so um, you know how does all that dynamic come together um, and really lead us to transform and you know we really believe that that uh, transformation starts and ends with with talent getting the right people in the right jobs with the right skills um, is the only way to drive and transform business and, and create growth. So it's, it's really that that led us, all of those elements that led us to thinking about how can we use uh, digital uh, AI capabilities to uh, really drive a, a different way of integrated talent management and, and therefore skills and people um, that we were looking for and need for the future. 
Thank you for that, Holly. We are going to dive deeper into that, but I do still remember the first presentation we did to Bay Area. Kamal, you were on that as well, back in 2019. So I remember the five pillars well. I, I did that presentation, so it's so fun to be back on here with you in this capacity. So Kamal, let's go over to you before we get into our questions and give us a little overview of Eightfold. Uh, we are an AI company, uh, and we are essentially looking to solve it for all talent, uh, employees, candidates, contractors, and now citizens. And the key thing that we are bringing to the table is understanding what someone is capable of doing so that our clients can hire and promote for potential and not just look at the rear view mirror of what people have done in the past. And since last year, I think the focus on <laughs> ENI has been great because intent was always there, but I think it was a lot of lip service, not enough progress. Now that intent is translating into resolve to make do something. But I think the key to that is uh, understanding what someone is capable of doing and the learnability of skills. We're all transforming our businesses. And as Holly said, every digital transformation needs talent transformation. So who's capable of doing the work? That makes it easy to then specifically promote more women hire more black Americans, hire more Hispanics, because a lot of them don't have the same, have not had the same opportunities, right? We are working, doing a lot of work here with uh, 110.org and a lot of the uh, target segment is actually they don't have a four year college degree. And by the way, one of the things from uh, Bayer team was also that don't use the college that someone attended as one of the factors in the recommendation because all colleges in Germany are deemed at par. Yeah. So it should not factor into who you're gonna yeah. hire. So one by one, as you eliminate the, make it an equal access for everyone. And then it doesn't stay at the theoretical stage, right? At every stage, I'll share with you numbers. Our clients today are hiring 50 to 60% more women. And some of our clients have improved their talent pipeline for black Americans and Hispanics by 30 to 40% because the underlying system is showing the capabilities that are not evident in people's resumes. So those are the things that I think we are here to break the orthodoxies that is actually sort of preventing us from executing what we all believe is a better way to get there. So I think Carl's point is spot on. There is so much data available that we don't actually bring it together. We don't use it in the right context. And we keep trying to do the same thing, expect different outcomes. And I think it's time for us to actually truly become more intelligent about uh, what's around us. And it's interesting, Kamal, you raised that point because we started to think about kind of data to insights in Bayer. Yep. So how could we get the insights from the data to uh, help make decisions in our business? Now it's about data to impact. So yep. how quickly can we impact the business through the data um, and, and really enable the business to move at pace and create better user experiences through the data. So we've kind of moved from data to insights to data to impact um, and, and really thinking about not just output, but impact on the business. Absolutely. And that's great to see only, I mean, if you look at, I mean, where we were probably it's not so far away, maybe it's like four or five years ago, right? It was about insights, right? Uh, to, to allow the people to make decisions, but then those yeah. decisions really got always stuck in the same place, right? If you look at, I mean, how technology can help us as well now to make decisions, right? And, and by the way, I love a eightfold example, right? And how you can transform a talent management, for example, right? A, taking insights to execution, right? Uh, to yeah. mention as well. So I think it's, it's transformational. It's um, the data is there. We just have to make sure that we can really uh, properly, uh, I mean, take it to execution through the through the process, right? And then, if I look at what Eightfold has done, right? I mean, really transforming a in an industry, transforming a, a, the way we did a process for many many years, right? And um, and really improving as well in the end people's lives, right? By doing that, and then as well productivity for companies. I just love it. I love the story. It's the evolution, right? You have, you started with the insights, now we're doing the impact and you know, there'll be a next evolution going. So thank you all for that. So let's jump into some questions. 
Um, Carl, I'm gonna go over to you first, but I want this to be super conversational. So if anybody wants to jump in, Holly, Kamal, Carl, and anybody's questions, jump in and, and let's keep that going. So Carl, we've talked a lot about intelligent enterprise. I'd love to understand how that's changing over time, especially as we start to hopefully move into a post pandemic world. Um, and any examples of how SAP customers are embracing it? Yeah, good question. And, and maybe, I mean, since I already described what the intelligent enterprise is before, maybe we can focus on, on why the customers need an intelligent enterprise, right? And, and why SAP is focusing so much on, on that uh, vision. And, and maybe since we want to do it as well conversational, Holly, I would like as well to get your point of view, right? I mean, how, uh, what is the vision of buyer as well to become an intelligent enterprise, right? And if, if what I'm going to say right now um, is this as well valid for, for buyer. So basically, if you look at the why, um, I think we just touch on the point, right? Um, why? Because there is a lot of data right, that we're not analyzing, right? We don't, we, we are analyzing and we get the insights, but then really to take the insights to action uh, is something that many companies in the world are not there yet, right? So I see a, a huge acceleration in the whole area of digital transformation um, due to, to the pandemic, by the way. So um, yep. if we look at the results of the tech companies, um, how much we have as well, every one of us embrace as well technology to communicate to each other, right? Yeah. I would just, before the, before the, the conversation here, we were having a chat about uh, travel, right? I mean, I don't travel since, since last, uh, since March 2020, right? And this is because I was enabled as well by my company to really run processes on a digital way, right? Yeah. Collaboration tools, but as well beyond, right? Making decisions, making sure that we can run the company in a way that we can uh, continue to operate. Right, more efficiently as well, and, uh, and with other uh, higher results, by the way. So, um, for me, the why we need an intelligent enterprise is because we need digitalization. Right, we, companies are going there. The pandemic has just accelerated that need to digitalize. Right, and um, the reason we we created that vision of the intelligent enterprise is because we continuously get feedback as well from customers. Right that in order to run digitally, right, to run really completely digitally or to a very large extent, they need as well this integration, right? They need those processes to be integrated, yeah. to talking to each other, so we don't have uh, silos, right, where we can, uh, or the information can get stuck, right? And then that will basically make as well uh, more difficult to make those decisions, right? And those yeah. are about the processes, right? I mean, how do we run those processes in an integrated way, the importance of integration and the value we create for the customers, right? But then on top of integration, there is innovation, right? So once we run processes in an integrated way, I think the, the, next, um, the next level for the customers, right, for our customers, is really to be able as well to innovate, right? And to change processes, to change functions, to change the way we have been always doing things because we thought they were the right ones, and to do them in a different way, right? To gain as well competitive advantage, right? And that's uh, for me what, what Aidful is doing, for example, right? I mean, really allowing uh, companies to run a specific process of the company in a very different way using integrated processes, using as well innovation on top, right, based as well on, on data and based as well on artificial intelligence. Holly, do you want to comment on any of that? No, I mean, look, you know, the COVID impacts. I mean, I think it's I think it's really interesting to see what's happened over the last year. And and like Carl, uh, my last trip was actually to Eightfold in San Francisco last February. <laughs> so, um, actually, that was my last uh, international trip. So interesting. But, um, you know, organizations have had to pivot. You know, more people working from home, more flexibility, people having to manage work and life as one. Um, we're really encouraging in Bayer, you know, bring your whole self to work. You know, let's really move the culture forward in terms of the types of skills and people and the balance of work and home life. We were just talking hope uh, before we came live that it's Mental Health Week in the UK next week. Uh, you know, This has grown to be one of the biggest um, awareness weeks in the UK. Well, you know, even a year ago, that wouldn't have been the case. So I think, you know, organisations have to think about their employee wellness, their engagement, their development, how you digitalise your workforce, um, how you give flexibility, the types of contracts, uh, the skills that we need to hire for. And that's without thinking about how the organisation has had to pivot from a strategic perspective. 
So, you know, if I, if I look at Bayer, um, you know, a year ago, we weren't producing vaccines. Now we're going to produce 160 million vaccines in 2022. So the types of people that we've had to hire this year for our manufacturing plants has been a completely different set of skills. Uh, we're now starting cell gene therapy in our R&D pharma business that we hadn't, uh, you know, been driving uh, last year, again, based on the back of COVID. Um, and that's without data scientists for um, you know, drone engineering, measuring crop performance and weather systems. Um, and with global warming, we've seen the effects of, of that over the last few weeks, even ourselves. Uh, today, you know, it's gone from blue sky to rain to blue sky. So, you know, we're, we're starting to see all of that and that has an impact on our, our crop and our yield business. And therefore, you know, technology has to help us with sensors and um, being able to uh, diagnose what's happening from a from a crop and yield and weather perspective so all of these different skills that that are coming into play from a business strategic perspective um, have changed dramatically over the last year um, and you know we we've got to move fast with uh, with the organization to be able to make sure that we've got the right talent pipelines and the, and the right people and skills in in those jobs so you know digitalization for us um, in our business has meant many, many different things. Um, and that's why we think AI and this type of platform and the partnership that we've got is able to help us with that when we're moving at such pace and speed uh, for the organization. Since you're all talking about pace and speed, I thought I'll give you uh, an interesting data point. So there's all this talk about autonomous driving, right? And uh, three years ago, in the news, the only thing that was being discussed about Tesla was a couple of cars had burst into flames. So it was basically an accident waiting to happen. And there were a couple of accidents that it was every Tesla on the road was basically a security hazard. And of course, negativity sells more. So that's what was being written about. Three years later, they are the most valued car maker in the world. Yeah. Now, Here's the difference in how autonomous cars work, right? All of us think we are very good drivers. And yet all of us, even if we drive a lot, will drive maybe a million miles in our lifetime. A million miles, right? Do the math how much you drive every year and how much how long you drive. Yeah. An average long haul driver drives about 8 million miles in their career. Human potential, if you all were doing was driving, is about 16 million miles. Semi-autonomous cars, which is what Tesla is, they are learning from 11 billion miles. And when we get to autonomous, they will be combined learning of over 223 billion miles. Think about it, if all this data about people's capabilities and career trajectories was made available to you, yeah. right? How much easy it is to make an informed decision yeah. and a confident decision that who's capable of doing what. Yeah. That's, and if we can unlock that in a self-service fashion, now that's a very different experience for the employees. Yeah. And let's not forget, Tesla will probably find out what we all already know, which is women are the better drivers. I agree with that. <laughs> I agree too. <laughs> I second that, Ali. They didn't. They didn't need that million data points. So I just, I <laughs> just asked Holly. <laughs> I love that. Back to the talent uh, topic. I mean, Holly, what you were basically saying, I was listening, and it's basically. I mean, everything is changing, right? I mean, the the jobs, right, and the way we do our work today yeah. is changing in every company, yeah. right? Yeah. Then we have yeah. the environment, which is changing as well, right? Yeah. Um, we have this. I mean, we have the pandemic. We have global warming. We have many things happening. And then, if you look as well at the at the people themselves, they have changed as well. When I talk to younger people, right, they don't have the same interest that I had, or they they didn't look at they yeah. don't look at careers the way I, I look at careers. So exactly. the, the values have changed as well in terms of how do we look at the, our lives and, and the careers. Yeah. So it's it's basically everything is kind of moving pieces, right? So yeah. it's, it's interesting, yeah. and that tells us as well. Let's make sure that we can leverage technology as well to get kind of the insights there and, and really see what is the right decision. Because we, we need to take the right decision 
but with so many moving parts, I understand it's, it's difficult. Yeah, I mean, gone are the days where you would see somebody, you know, in a career 30 years in one organization. I think, you know, you're right, you know, youngsters are coming up the next generation and, you know, they, they want portfolio careers, they want gig, more gig contracts. Um, they want to build their skills across different industries. Uh, they want to work for companies that have a real uh, conscience and sustainability. They want to work in inclusive cultures. So really having uh, organizations that understand that difference is good. Um, and you know, and being agnostic about where they work and how they work. So you know, going to where the talent is, not having uh, head offices and sites where people have to come to. I think uh, those days are past us now, and I think you know, organisations have to embrace um, you know, being agnostic about contract types and locations and and where the talent sits and how the talent works. Okay. And I think it'll be a really interesting to see if that creeps back into more office-led environments or whether we stick to more flexibility. I think uh, most organizations, I think, will stick to more flexibility. Absolutely. Actually, for the last few months, we have actually not had a physical office because yeah. we let go of our lease. Uh, yeah. SpaceX moved into our old office and uh, in a week or two, we'll actually have our new office. But there was no place to go to. And we actually went for a bigger place so that when you meet, it may actually be more for team meetings than individual needs. Yeah. So very different setup and uh, thinking of what office means to us now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I think this all, you know, Holly, you said in the very beginning about how if you want to transform your business and you want to be agile, you have to start with talent. And that's just the core theme and everything we're talking about. Um, so it's, it's a great discussion. So, Carl, I want to jump back into a little bit about the um, intelligent enterprise and understand what is the best way for customers to learn more about not just the intelligent enterprise, but SAP partner applications um, such as Eightfold. Yeah, well, intelligent enterprise, I think I mean, uh, the best way customers can learn about it is definitely uh, reach their uh, account executive, right? So I mean, we, we will be able as well to support in terms of really building on that vision that we have for the intelligent enterprise, sharing the details, uh, working as well on a roadmap on how to get there, right? Um, and then there is obviously a sort of, as well, a lot of information on SAP.com, right? So I think we have plenty. We have as well customer stories, customer cases. So we are very happy to share all of that. And then to your question, right? Because I mean, as I said at the beginning, there is no intelligent enterprise if we don't have partners, right? So partners play a key role in helping us really have an intelligent enterprise and make it as well a reality for our customers. Um, I mean, what I encourage the customers to do is, well, they can reach out to us as well, right? The account executive or, um, or SAP.com as well. But we have a marketplace, right? We have a store where we have actually published and, and validated as well many of the SAP solutions, right? And then you will see as well that we have a different chapter for those top five partners worldwide that we have, where Eightfold is, is one of them, right? Which we call endorse apps. But basically all of them, I think we have now more than 1,700 solutions in the marketplace, right, on the store uh, that customers can, can go and, and can see as well what we have there in terms of the partner IP, right? And, and the, I mean, call to action as well for the customers, this will be growing, right? So we want as well more white spaces to, build for, uh, to be filled with partners. Uh, we want as well to embrace more partners that really help us as well to complete that intelligent enterprise and to add value to them, to add value to the customers. So, uh, I mean, Please visit the, the marketplace, visit the, the store uh, of sap.com. And again, we're going to continue as well to build on top of that uh, store to make sure as well that we have relevant solutions for every customer problem and we can complete the intelligent enterprise. So to bring that full circle, when Holly and team found Eightfold, it was through the SAP App Store. So that is where I think the original, original touch point was, then they reached out to us. So full circle here. <laughs> so Holly, with that, let's jump over to you. Very clearly, you are a pioneer of talent transformation. And I would, you know, you've been leading global talent transformation for Bayer. So I know we talked about COVID and acquisitions, and I'd love just to understand more about what's led to the transformation and how things are going over there. Yeah, so I guess um, 
for us, it was about um, the digitalization. It was about the people strategy and the five pillars. It was about um, creating a simplified process and creating better end user experiences. How do we fully integrate from hire to retire? How do we really think about that whole experience end to end? And for us, I guess, eightfold, when we went to market and we started looking for a strategic partner, um, I mean, we went to many uh, places and spoke to many people about who should be that partner. And I guess where we landed was um, we didn't want to lay a system over system over system because that causes issues, to Carl's point, around experience and integration. So, you know, for us, it was about having um, an integrated talent management platform, not applications in each discipline and each silo, because we could have split kind of talent acquisition, talent management learning. And we really felt that integrated talent management platform was the right way to go. Um, and for us, it was about unconscious bias. So uh, we have a very big inclusive um, drive in terms of our culture, in terms of our diversity, in terms of you know um, really thinking about the purpose of, of Bayer. And we really see talent. I mean, I've talked about talent being at the heart of everything that we that we think about, but we see everybody as being talented in Bayer. Everybody brings something. Um, and therefore, you know, we wanted unconscious bias with anonymous screening. We wanted robust diversity analytics. We wanted to make sure that really uh, whatever partner we went with, uh, we, we really um, could feel that everything was integrating. We were getting great data insights. Um, and SAP, obviously, the, the relationship and the partnership with SAP is already our uh, HR partner, uh, just, just all made sense. We, we love the fact that um, it's a very um, agile organization. It was a you know, great startup. The founders were very impressive, you know, coming from the Google Facebook background, Kamal. Um, and, and really, it felt you know, we could really work and partner culturally. It was a good fit as well um, with the already established partnership of SAP and, and ourselves and our team. So I think um, it absolutely is the right partner, uh, no doubt about it. It is a journey. So you're right, Hope, you know, and on any journey where you're transforming, it can feel, you can feel discomfort. It can have bumps along the road. Um, you know, this is something that isn't just about technology. This is about a change in culture and a change in mindset. This is a very different way of hiring, you know, hiring for skills and potential, not experience and background. Um, but we have a fantastic example in our new HR leader who's come in, Serena, um, as head of business strategy and talent, who does not have an HR background. Um, she comes from a consultancy background um, and she's all about change and transformation and innovation and talent um, from a business perspective. So here we've hired somebody for her skills. Um, not her background and experience in HR. So a really leading example in our organization um, as a board member running a function where she has no HR experience. So um, that just shows how progressive we're trying to be uh, as an organization and how this really starts at, at the top. So, you know, for us, um, you know, we talk about you know, the, the purpose, we talk about um, career for everybody in the world. You know, for us, our purpose is hunger for none, health for all. Um, and our purpose is, you know, right now, kind of be yourself, come and be at Bayer. Um, and you've probably seen our new brand advertising as well, that's be you, be Bayer, because we want, you know, a brand and a, and a cultural feel um, that you can be analytical, you can be innovative, you can be entrepreneurial, you can be um, creative, you can be anybody you want to be, come and be it here. And um, you know, we'll develop you, we'll help you, we'll coach, we'll mentor you. Um, and, and really the platform of Eightfold is able to uh, join up all of those things for us to create great employee journey experiences. 
What an answer. I love the hunger for none health for all. I love that. I, I do have another question for you, but I'm going to switch, switch over to Kamala for a second because I really want to yeah. hear your thoughts on the, you know, the skills versus capabilities, because I think that's going to tie in perfect with what Holly just talked about. Absolutely. By the way, Carl, next time you go to Waldorf, you should go to Leverkusen. And because it's actually very interesting in their headquarters there, just the journey around where they were mm -hmm. and what they are, what their vision is now in actually getting into agriculture and optimizing it. And uh, and then enjoy some asparagus wine there. You'll love it. Oh, really? Asparagus wine? Yeah. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> we have a whole wine. We have a whole wine cellar underneath our uh, Leverkusen hotel. <laughs> so, hope uh, that's a good question because there is a lot of talk about skills, and uh, we do talk uh, about capabilities. And a lot of talk about skills cloud and skills ontology. And the issue is this, that the next thing to do is be more data driven and be more current. Right? So the problem with the traditional approaches has been that I'm going to build a new skills ontology. But most of these efforts or skills clouds, they are really static, built manually, single dimensional proficiency. right? Either you have it or you don't. No concept of context. That in one co what context is person a good fit, like uh, Holly was saying, purpose, fit, workforce. And most of the time, these projects take a long time and they're outdated by the time they're done because skills are not static, right? They are evolving. New things are emerging. So our approach has been, because the purpose of this thing is to be forward looking, how do we actually understand and make the whole system self-updating and automatic? So as we are learning across the globe, and on aggregated and anonymized learning, that is now feeding every customer's underlying platform. So, and it focuses on learnability, like blockchain. How many people are there who know blockchain? Not that many, because the technology is fairly new. But who can learn blockchain? That is more important, right? And then understand the context, evolve with time. So as new things are emerging, you should be able to account for that. And then adapt to the evolution. Because, for example, Bayer 10 years ago may have a different skill set because it was largely a pharma company. Now it has a very different skill set. Same thing with SAP, right? 40 year, 50 year old giant, but now cloud is part of the DNA. AI soon will be part of the DNA. So, how do you evolve there? And to give you a couple of examples so that it doesn't stay in theory, what this leads to when you're able to do this for your employees is. 35% to 81% improvement in internal hires. Because that's testament to that people are able to do other roles if we know how to find the potential. And the second one is 15% improvement in transfers within different functions. So the portability of skills and learnability of skills. And that's when people will say, hey, I don't need to go anywhere else because there are other opportunities. I mean, both SAP, Bayer are very large organizations. There's no dearth of a job, any job within these organizations. So that's essentially what we're looking to unlock at scale. So Kamo, can you give a couple examples? I mean, you know, obviously we're on with Bayer and SAP. SAP is foundational to that. Can you give a couple customer examples with SAP customers in Eightfold? Sure. So Dexcom, uh, they basically have variable device for there, and they've also been hiring uh, all over the place, all over the globe, actually. They've been growing like crazy. They're now an S&P 500 company. Uh, they actually are uh, based in San Diego, but they do hiring in Germany and other parts of the world, Asia also. So they've had tremendous success. And another large financial services company actually switched before they went live for hiring with a new candidate experience to provide the same for employees. Mercado Libre has had plenty of success. They're actually most valued company in Latin America with the same value proposition that how can I make it all data driven? How do I make it transparent? And every time they run their ads and promotions, there's like a deluge of people who want to join. Now the specific data for large brands is 30 to 40% of the hiring is now happening from people that they already know. So from their own data. 90% of the pipeline can be filled with people that they already know. And 
very high 30 to 50 percent conver conversion of visitors to candidates right so at every place uh, what carl was laying out that digital is unlocking productivity that wasn't conceivable earlier and uh, to free up half of the time for a recruiter or an hr business partner is a big deal that means they have more time to spend with actual employees and help them yeah. Yeah, and I think Holly, when we look at the, you know, the Bayer use case, that was big for you. And you did talk yeah. about that, how these processes that we've always used and always yeah. done, they're lengthy, <laughs> right? So how do we free up the time to actually spend with employees on internal mobility or yeah. candidates with having real conversations, which is what we yeah. should be doing? Um, and Holly, I've got, go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to say on that, Hope. Um, you know, and we, we started at a place that was a very tactical hiring model uh, when I first joined. And now, you know, we're spending time with the business. We need to spend more time with the business because everything we're trying to solve starts with the bit. What's the business problem we're trying to solve? Yeah. <laughs> and then you work back and say, OK, well, this is the talent that we need to solve that problem. And these are the skills and experiences. And, you know, for, for, for us, you know, getting to a point where we can strategically and proactively pipeline for the skills we need for the future three to five years out through the predictive analytics um, is just so imperative to stay ahead of our competitors and also be able to hire the best talent in the world. So for us um, to, to be able to have more strategic pipelining um, linked to proper workforce planning um, is is the journey that we're on. We're not there yet, uh, but that's the journey that we're on. Yeah, and Holly, what, what you just mentioned about the I mean, hiring for the future, right? I mean, it's I mean, you can hire for the jobs, right? Which is like this tactical recruitment that you were just mentioning before. But as well, listening to you, and you mentioned that before, we want the people just to come to buyer, right? And then we'll realize what career do they have with, with the buyer. Yeah. We're going to help yeah. them, right? And this yeah. is basically yeah. the, the vision that you guys have, right? I mean, it's basically we hire for the company. We don't hire for the jobs, right? So we hire exactly. for the company. And then there will be, exactly. if we develop that talent properly, we're going to make sure as well that whenever there is the, the, the right job that the, we need to fill, we can hire as well within the internal. Exactly. Uh, exactly. exactly. So it's, it's a and, different approach. Exactly. And continuous learning environment. Yeah. You know, what we're seeing now is that uh, certainly talent want to be continually developed and continuously learn and um, you know, have that cross fertilization of talent and have the agility to be able to move talent around your organization. And I think kind of in the future, even those talent exchanges uh, with other organizations. Absolutely. The evolution. Exactly. The evolution of talent. And hey, I am living proof of that, right? You heard my story in the beginning. So um, I do. Okay. So I've got one more question for you, Holly, because I am just really excited for everyone to hear this answer. And then we're going to do the quick Q and a, because we're getting close to time. So I, Holly, I would love to understand from your perspective, what you think the next big innovation, um, in the talent world, what's, what's coming in your eyes. Okay, so good question. I mean, look, Hope, I probably just touched on it there. I, I think there's a couple of things. You know, if we if we look at the the near term, and, and I mean near term, kind of the next three years or so, um, you know, it, it's always about the constant need to recruit for potential and, and for skills. And then it's that sophistication of how can we then exchange that talent across organizations and how can you create circles or segments um, so that you can build knowledge sharing, that you can build your career based on your skills um, to work in a more portfolio based way. So how can um, you as an individual use your skills to work for organizations when they need uh, your particular skills at any moment in time for, for business growth and strategies. And I think what we'll start to see is more and more of that. I think what we'll start to see is more and more uh, people using uh, talent to create the biggest business impact that they can at any moment in time. Uh, and that will mean that people will have diverse careers, they'll have portfolio careers, um, they'll it'll create more agile uh, working relationships across organizations. We started to see that actually in there, we've just done a piece of work on with Google for Google careers. So 
um, you know, we're one of their partner companies looking at that. So uh, these talent exchanges, and I know that Eightfold are now building their talent exchange as well, and, and that getting uh, people that are unemployed back into the workplace. How can we use that to leverage in our um, emerging talent segments of young people, so graduates, interns, uh, apprenticeships, etc., across different organizational partners? So I think in the near term, we'll see that. I think longer term, um, you know, we will see perhaps HR becoming redundant as we know it today, just throw that out there maybe, um, you know, we'll start to see more career advisors, skills advisors, talent advisors, um, where you're really um, kind of skills brokers, if you like. So you're helping uh, individuals uh, build uh, the, the roles that they need based on their skills. And what you'll see is HR processes being done by uh, machines. Um, so you'll see uh, much more of, of the operational side of HR probably uh, falling away and being done by AI and robots and machines. And um, you know, I suspect in not too distant future, we won't have mouses and keyboards and it'll all be done by, by sensors and we'll communicate through, um, you know, through, through machines. So, I, I, you know, I see the evolution of, of the people agenda really changing into more of a skills brokering um, talent and career brokerage um, uh, department rather than uh, HR processes and, and, and things that can be done by, by AI machines and, and robots. So I think it will be interesting to see how quickly that comes. But just taking the Tesla example, I don't think it's that far away. So then your HR teams are going to have to pivot their own skills um, to, to think about you know, what, does that, what does that mean and how can I create uh, and, and leverage my own skills to pivot into perhaps other parts of the business or, or in fact be these uh, skills broker uh, roles of the future. I don't know, what do you guys think? <laughs> I, that was brilliant. I was going to say all our jobs are going to change in three to five years. What I'm excited about is that an HR leader is saying that HR could actually be redundant in a few years. I mean, that's refreshing. That's that a very personal opinion. <laughs> I think no, all my no. HR colleagues at Bayer might have a different opinion. <laughs> yeah, but the role will be different, right? That's what essentially you're saying. Yeah. The role will be different. Yeah, yeah. the roles will, will definitely uh, change. You can see much more um, you know, automation, much more robot AI machines are doing, doing the process work. Holly, that's one of the reasons I've loved prepping with you for this webinar is because you're a big thinker and it's been a pleasure to hear, you know, your, you know, your future thoughts and, and what's going on. But in the last couple of minutes, we have a lot of questions. So let's try to get to them. So Kamal, this is for you. Um, can you elaborate on the kind of capabilities that are measured in eightfold? And is the assessment of capabilities taking place in eightfold or SAP? Uh, if it's already happening at SAP, it can stay there and we can simply pull that in where needed. Otherwise, we do have a competency model that can be added so that it mirrors what you're trying to do. So SAP would stay as a system of record. We are simply providing the intelligence layer and the engagement layer for the employees. Okay. Question for Holly. What was the reaction of your employees when you introduced an AI-based talent marketplace? Was there a need to convince them? If so, how did you do that? Sounds like somebody is trying to transform talent. <laughs> Holly? I think. Oh, well, are you back? Back, we're back. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I said before, it's a journey. There've been bumps al along the way. Um, I think that as an organization, and I said to you before, this isn't about tech implementation. This is about mindset, cultural shift, capability shift. Look, there are some countries in the world and, and we've landed this in 24 locations um, and that's 24 country groups. So I should be specific around the 41 locations within those country groups in 11 languages. Not Germany yet, but um, we're getting closer because of the, uh, the, the, the Workers' Council agreement and we're still in liaison on uh, Germany. But um, actually around the world, uh, 
depending on the country and the region, you know, really embracing this, you know, really understanding this is the future, this is the way forward, um, and, and wanting to embrace the technology. Now, you know, is there seamless experience and integration? We've talked about it. Um, you know, that's the path that, that we're on. Um, and, and culturally, you know, the, the teams have had to adapt, whether that's the recruiters or the sources or the HR business partners and the way in which we talk to the business. You know, we're now talking to the business about slates of candidates that don't have the traditional backgrounds or experience that perhaps they've seen before. So, you know, we're having to talk to them about transferable skills. Um, and, you know, using my example of, of, of Serena, uh, you know, that, that shows how beneficial it can be to the organization so just using um, data using insights using um, great test stories you know being transparent about those cases where it's worked uh, really well for the business and we've seen success um, and you know just gaining momentum in in that way um, and and as I say you know we're at the start of that journey we implemented last year uh, we're not yet kind of six months embedding. Uh, I think we'll see more of that as we go into the second half of this year. Yeah, and I think it's something to note on that question too, is those conversations that you have to have with, with your team when you're looking to bring new technology in, those are also conversations eightfold and success factors in SAP can help you have, right? Building business cases and building the value to be able to show your organization. So perfect reason to get in touch with um, with Eightfold and SAP. So let's see, Kamal, I've got a question for you. How does your AI validate skills slash infer skills as it relates to matching diversity profiles? Most AI relies on self-made profiles, resumes, and job descriptions, et cetera. Yeah, so our approach is trust but validate. And uh, somebody's resume or their LinkedIn profile is essentially a self-attested document. So we have a very large global data set, underlying data set, and uh, you know, having looked at billion plus profiles, billion, million plus skills, million plus roles. So all of that we use to determine that regardless of what you have shared, if you've been from a certain company, do we know of others who are also using the same terms when they talk about their work in engineering or sales, et cetera. So we are able to establish, have we seen similar roles, capabilities, skills, and then give you that information. And plus identify likely skills, things that you didn't state, but you probably have. And missing skills, which are needed for the job. And the last thing is you may be claiming that I'm an AI expert, but there is no evidence of any other engineer or anybody else saying that from that company. So then you may actually have it, but let's just make sure that in the interview process, we are able to validate it, right? So our, and we'll show you with all that, that we know of so many hundred people that are saying exactly that. And that makes it easy for both the candidate and for the hiring manager. Now in our candidate experience, that is used to actually say whenever you are uploading your pro profile to a career site that, hey, we think you're a great fit for this role because of these reasons. That positive reinforcement goes a long ways, especially for diversity candidates to say, I didn't realize that. Let me apply. This is different. Absolutely. It's shifting the mindset. Um, yep. So we are about out of time. Um, so I want to just thank you, Carl, Kamal, and Holly. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all the attendees. Um, as far as a call to action, as Carl mentioned, um, feel free to go to the SAP App Store. If you click contact us, that will come to me and you will we'll all get in touch via your um, success practice AE, SAP AE. You can also come to Eightfold, reach out to us directly, and we'll loop in the SAP side. There was also a really great recent white paper by Josh Burson um, that we'd love for you to download. But with that, thank you all so much for being here, and we will all chat soon. Thank you. Everyone. Thanks, everybody.